but I've been coaching football in track here since the early 1990s. I started teaching here in 1994, and ever since I've been a part of Columbine, there's never been a lot of reference that I'm aware of to a rebel rooster. Now, it could be legend, it could be folklore, it could be actually true. I remember 1992, 93 was when I was a freshman and a sophomore here. We had a mascot that this dude would run around and it was basically a big chicken that was had like blue legs and, and it was white for the most part and was really young. But uh, there was no connection to Columbine with the Rebel Rooster from a standpoint of um, it didn't have any meaning. So they got rid of the Rebel Rooster and now you have the Rebel Man. What we have, I think, is uh, the Rebel Rooster. Well, I've been here 35 years, and I think it was always, uh, when I first got here, we had the Rebel Rooster, but I think as time went on during uh, Columbine's existence, the Rebel Rooster gave way to the Rebel Man. But uh, I think there was a period of time in our uh, culture in which I think it was in San Diego where they had the San Diego chicken. And so it was kind of a takeoff on the San Diego chicken as a mascot. And the rebels, Columbine rebels, decided to have the rebel rooster. But once again, I think the rebel rooster kind of flew the coop and was replaced by the rebel man. Three words that I would use to describe the rebel chicken. One, spirited. Two, patriotic. And three, frightening. And those are three great qualities to have when you're playing an opponent. Not so good at the pep assemblies, but really good at the, when you're playing somebody in their house or in our house or what we call our roost because he's the rebel chicken, the chicken roost.